Holy smokes. Hi, everyone. Hi, guys. Welcome to our Hi. You Can Genre Roundtable. Please remember to remain muted unless you're called on and introduce yourself before you ask your first question. There will be no follow-up questions, only one question at a time, and I will call on you by name. Nick, you have the first question. Thank you so much for the first question and to you, Leslie, Hi, Nick. For, uh, for everything. Hello. Oh, yeah. Hello. I'm Nick with CinemaBlend.com. That uh, good timing on my part there. Um, I wondered if you could talk about um, with or without detriment to your male co-stars who could easily just grow a beard uh, to speak about the aging effects um, throughout, like how that was all filmed and how that went for you. Um, I think the boys, oddly, for the first time in the history of the world, had the rougher go of the aging. So they, I mean, maybe I, I they, they, they always had like three hour earlier call, calls than I did. So I, um, mine was easy. They just put wrinkles in here. They just did some wrinkles right here and then like under here and under here. And then like, we just like showed my skin's flaws. And, and then I just thought if it's really, if they need more, they'll probably add more stuff afterwards. But the guys were like under a crazy amount. And also at the end of the day, they had to have all of that stuff taken off. So it took like 45 minutes. So from a purely selfish point of view, I kind of kept mine. Uh, I was like, she's a superhero. How old does she have to look like, you know? So, um, but yeah, mine wasn't bad. I feel like the boys really got the brunt of it. But um, yeah, no, mine was pretty easy. It wasn't I, I, I really can't complain. And I'm sure those boys will complain till, you know, the cows come home about that time. But I think they actually kind of liked it just sort of because it gets you there. Um, and my gray wig, which, you know, was, I, I mean, it was fun. I loved also like when back in the, in the 20s, I had that little Louise Brooks stuff. I'd never worn a wig before. And so it was kind of fun to do that because as soon as you put it on, it's like you immediately change. So I was into that. But the gray wig, my problem though is sometimes with the wigs, you're like, you can just see, you know, days when it was maybe done a little better than other days. <laughs> but um, I liked it. I was very obsessed with the color of it being the right color of having sort of like they're doing gray is so great now. So I don't know. I didn't mind it. I liked it. Thank you. Next question goes to Wayne with Where's the Buzz? Hey, Wayne with Where's the Buzz. Um, hi, your Wayne. Hi, <laughs> your character is kind of has like, it's like, it kind of like your kids are like um, being distant away and then like mm -hmm. you kind of have to stick with this code. Can you kind of like talk about that? Um, I think you're finding Grace, you know, you see her in the 20s, you see her as a journalist, um, a photojournalist, and someone who's like seeking the truth and has chosen a life that probably her parents probably wouldn't want with her. She's not picking a husband or kids at that time in her life. So you sort of see this fearless sort of woman in the beginning. And then as you meet her at sort of the end, um, she is caught, I feel like, you know, she's caught between her job, which is, you know, to protect the world and uphold this code. She's also a mother. And I think Grace is a lioness when it comes to her kids. And she's also caught with her husband who has a very stubborn black or white sort of view of the world. And I think you are seeing Grace sort of unable to tow the company line right now and and watching like in this pursuit to support the code and support her husband and to keep it all afloat she's watching her relationship with her kids fall apart she's watching herself as a woman and who she is and her makeup fall apart and um I think that it's interesting because she's about she's on the crux of a big change 
And I think that that's, I love that sort of turn that she's taking and her finally saying to Sheldon, no, because I don't think anybody ever says no to him and saying no, because it's not working. I don't think, and I think nothing can be more true right now. Things are not black and white and we have to stop treating them like they are. And so, um, and I think that she's trying to hold space for her kids because you know, it must be incredibly hard to grow up in the shack. Can you imagine if your parents were superheroes and you were pushed into a life that you didn't really ask for, but you have to do the company business. You have to tow the company lines. It must be incredibly hard. So I think one great thing about Grace Kennedy is that she, or Lady Liberty, is that she is very compassionate. And I think she has always an ear for those young superheroes and always is able to see how hard it must be for them. You know, it's hard to be young and do the right thing. I mean, I know when I was in my 20s, I screwed up all the time. So I think her, she's trying, she's trying to, to do the right thing with her kids and, and sort of hold space for them. So does that answer the question? No, yeah, thank you so much. Does it? Sorry, sometimes I start rambling and I'm like, what are you talking about? So sorry if it didn't. Next question goes to Laura with We Are Entertainment News. Hi, Leslie. Oh, hi. We Are Entertainment News. I'm wondering, where did all the other villains with powers come from if the original six were the only ones given powers? Uh, you know what? Well, I think there's things. I think that you... That's probably the best question for Mark Miller um, because God knows how it'll trickle out. But I just think that um, certain things happen on that boat. So some people on that boat, did you remember when, they, when we come out, they felt the blast from the boat. So don't discount every, everybody on that, all those sort of pirates on that boat will probably resurface at some point. Um, and as for Black Star, I know Mark Miller gave me some reason why Black Star has those superhero powers. I don't remember. So I'm just gonna be honest and I'm not gonna try to make something up. But I do know that, cause we were all like, how did they all get it? But I think it's, I do know that when we got blasted, you see all those guys and they sort of do this, that all of those guys, I feel like will resurface and, uh, and there are little clues throughout it. Like you'll, you'll see them like as sometimes on the side of like vans or stuff that so you'll see like little, you know, hat tilts to bad guys to come. But ask Mark Miller, he's always got an answer for that. Next question. Next question goes to Jimmy with Bleeding Cool. Hello, this is Jimmy with Bleeding Cool. How are you doing today, Leslie? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. That's not my actual question, though. Um, Mark, <laughs> okay, you're, you're done. <laughs> Mark Miller uh, writes a lot of superheroes that are analogs and amalgamations of other superheroes. Uh, so I'm wondering uh, if you, what's it like to put your stamp on a completely new character and have people follow you? And did you use anybody? past superheroines as influence? That's a really good question. Uh, I hadn't thought about that. Um, I, did, I didn't use other superheroes, but I did, I think I based, I had to start with her root. I had to start before she was Lady Liberty, who she was, which was Grace Kennedy. And I love Grace in the twenties. I just, I love her moxie and her chutzpah and her fearlessness um and those i sort of used for me I, I always in my trailer i always put pictures of characters that i'm looking for inspiration so um i use more people so amelia Earhart was someone that i used um i used harrison ford in um in raiders as also a part of her um, I, 
use, I love Catherine Hepburn. So that was also somebody that I felt like had to have a little bit of, of Grace's, you know, mojo. Um, Rosalind Russell and His Girl Friday was also a vibe that was in there. Um, so there was a mix between like, you know, I think of that, of like, if I could figure out who she was when she was younger and what would before she became, because I, I didn't want her to lose that, that, you know, she's still the same person when she gets these powers, because, you know, I mean, Iron Man's still Iron Man. Deadpool's still Deadpool when he gets the powers. So I wanted her to be funny, take charge, a woman in a man's world, unapologetic, um, a good listener, because I think as a journalist, you have to be a good listener, otherwise you're not gonna get the scoop. Um, and uh, curious was an important adjective for her. Um, yeah, so I think those were sort of my basis for her. And then the superhero was just like the cherry. Cause then I'm like, if I'm that person and I can fly and pick up anything I want and run faster and do it all, like watch out. The world, the world has no idea what's about to hit them. So I, I liked that part of it. I liked seeing a woman at that time and with that sort of, you know, and I, I thought really something that was interesting is Grace was like the head of her uh, wrestling. She was like the captain of her wrestling team. Like the fact that she was a wrestler in the twenties, like, I don't know, it's like some fun fact that I found out about her. So when we were doing the fight sequence, I remember our stunt coordinator, we were doing it and they were very like ladylike sort of fighting. And I was like, this has no vibe to it. It just, I said, this isn't this woman. He's like, well, your name is Lady Liberty. And I said, yeah, she's not a lady. Like, that's not like, like I said, she's, she's a fighter. She's a badass. She's was the captain of her wrestling team. Like she's a woman who's picking career over merit. Like she's, she colors outside the lines. So um, they changed all of our stunt stuff so that I did like this crazy suplex with, Black Star, and we did more grappling. So I don't know. I I I love who Grace. I kind of think she was kind of like a superhero before she got the the crazy you know cat suit on and wore a cape. But so that was sort of who she was. the The powers are just icing on the cake for her. Does that help? Is that okay? I can't. Can you, mute, can you guys unmute him so I can hear him? I said, oh, yeah, that's a great answer. Thank you. Thanks Okay, good, much. good, good, yeah. good. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you. Next question to Lyra from Fangirlish. Hi, I'm Lyra from Hi. Fangirlish. Hi, Lyra. Um, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I like, oh, look at all your stuff behind you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I try it. to have like a theme. I um, like your theme. Thank you. Also, I love the bangs. They are working. Thank you so much <laughs> for a job. I'm, I'm doing this um, comedy with Melissa McCarthy and I'm That's in so Australia cool. right now. So, and I'm playing oh, Satan. Wow. So I decided Satan should have a very it hard fantastic. Day. Thank um, you. My question was- I love the hair, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> my question was about the first time that you put on the suit because <gasps> yeah, I want to know, yes. did you feel like a badass? You were going to take over like the world? Yeah. Like, how was it? Yeah. Yeah, no. So, uh, well, it's, it really does literally take your breath away and take your breath away. Like you zipped in and you're like, oh, I can't breathe. But it also is like every, I don't know, like it's like every childhood dream to get like, not like some janky costume that you get from like, you know, Halloween's R Us or something. Like it's like a real super suit and a cape and the boots and the authenticity. It's, it's so incredible. And then they put you in a rig and then you fly and you're hovering above the ground by like 45 feet. Like it's, it really is as, as silly, it's, it never got old. 
it was always cool. It's, I mean, I think you, I, I, I find it hard. You, I feel like you can't put on that suit and look crappy. I think it's like, it just, it's built to make you look great. And you have, it has like a little muscle suit. So it accentuates stuff. It gave me boobs where I don't have boobs. It gave me that, you know, like it was just, it was just the best of the best. And then also makes you feel official, I guess would be the word. Like you feel really and so I was somewhere in Toronto, this little side street. And so we've been filming and, and, and Ben and I had gone out for dinner and we were walking home and there was these three sort of drunk white guys who were like frat boys. I mean, their color doesn't matter, but they were like frat boys, just like drunk and being dumb. And this sweet family was walking with two kids and the husband and wife and like, they just sort of turned on the, and they were just saying stuff and being inappropriate and like just, just being drunk and stupid. And Ben and I were sitting there and we were waiting because I was like, let, let those hojos like get down the way. And then the guy sort of pushed his friend and it almost hit this, this family, like almost ran into them. And I don't know what happened, but I went, hey, hey, hey. And I went into this throng of three dudes and I was like, listen, dude, back, I mean, and I had some choice words. I had a thing. And Ben's like, oh, great. We're going to get her. And I, I, it was so funny. He came up and he's like, come on, Leslie, let's go. And he, you know, he said something to me. I mean, it was so funny. I ended up making fun of his Canadian accent, which wasn't very nice, I'm sure. But I was just like, he said, Leslie, you're not a real superhero. I was like, I know. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> but like, you feel like, I think when you come home at the end of the day, you feel like you have this sense of being invincible. And it's, I really think it starts with that great costume. And our costume designer was this woman, Liz Wolf, and she was so detailed in every aspect of it. So if you look at on all the art, like um, all of, especially me, Ben, Paragon's brainwave, Paragon, Utopian and Lady Liberties, if you look, um, there's a language and it's like this sort of beautiful like thread work that she created, which she, this is all her just coming up with it. It's all over Utopian, like the whole language is all over his white. And then all of us, we have like versions of the language, like just so that, so the, just the detail and the layer upon layer of like work on it is just magnificent. She did such a good job because those are not easy to build. And she sort of had to, you know, there's a costume that's sort of, you know, in on, you know, paper in the comic book, and then you have to elevate it and really make it come to life. And so I think she did a really, really good job. Thank it's you. Fun. Thank you. Next question goes to May from Screen Rant. Hi, Leslie. Hi, how are you? To speak to you. Good, how are you? I'm good, thank um, you. Uh, so Grace is, she starts off as an energetic journalist and then a superhero, and she's sort of the glue that holds her family together. But what right. was it like to for you to play such a multifaceted character, to see her evolution from the 20s on? Um, I think it's probably the reason I did the show, because I love that journey. Um. I don't know. I, I kind of feel like Grace is somebody I'd want to be. Like I find her to be, I think she kind of, um, she has such a wonderful moral compass, you know? And I think that glue is, I mean, she's, I love the way that she holds everything together. And again, like this journey for her to find her fearlessness again. Um, but yeah, no, I, I love her. I, I think that it is difficult. Like, I think it's interesting to see this woman in this transition of like sort of towing the company line and towing the, towing the company line. And then finally just, you know, saying, no, I can't do it. I'm mad as hell and I can't take it anymore. Like, she's just like, and seeing that sort of reflection back to who she was, which I, you know, I think they're, I want in my life that as I get older to still see the woman 
I've, you know, I, I was, I want to have like, you know, hopefully I'm smarter, you know, I don't make the same dumb mistakes, but I hope you see like my curiosity and my sense of adventure. And I think like, I think Grace has started to sort of lose that. And it almost feels like she's like, you know, not like just checking in for work, but it feels like that. It feels like this, you're seeing somebody who's just been told, this is what we do, this is what we do. And, and she's not having to think about it. And suddenly it's like, these rules of engagement aren't working. So I find it really exciting, that journey for her and to see hopefully where, if it continues, where it'll go, you know? Did I answer your question? Halfway through, I felt like I had a brain fart and I was like, what is was, my question? It was great. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry. If I didn't tell me and I'll try to do a better job. But all of a sudden I started talking. And I was like, oh, I can't stand the sound of my own voice right now. <laughs> okay, we have time for one last very quick question from Julia. Uh, hi, I'm Julia from Geek Girl Authority. Um, so hi. I guess my, hi. My question is, um, you're a part of both stories here. You're part of the 1930s, get their powers, and then this generational shift in to the younger supers. How was it to see both of those play out in the final edit of the show? So cool. I love it. I mean, I'm really pretty part. I really, I'm, I had never done like a period, like, anything of this length of time in period, like, you know, in set in like the twenties or anything, a, a period piece, if you will. Um, I loved it. I, I really enjoy the time in the past. I think that I love putting on all those old clothes. I love, I just, I loved it. I loved everything about it. Um, so I don't know. I think I preferred the past to the present, you know? I think it's interesting to be able to look back and, uh, you know, you never really have that in a show. You sort of, they'll talk about it or you'll maybe have like one or two flashbacks, but you don't really see this simultaneous, like each world living and breathing and seeing like someone's response back then and then someone's response. Like you don't usually get that comparison. So I think that's partly like one of the really cool things about this show. Um, but I, I love, I love being in the past on that. I think it, it's so fun and it's such a, also, I like seeing all of these people when they are sort of that they're, I don't know, their most idealistic person perhaps might be the right world. I mean, I know, I know for me and I, I think for Mike, I think actually probably for all of them, you know, you're sort of on the balls of your feet, if you will. And, and you haven't really settled back. Like I, I love seeing that with the whole, the, the whole group of us, the whole, essentially, you know, what will become the union. And I love even like, if you sit, you have us when we're sitting around that big table for the first time, I love, it's like kids who've been, you get to sit, sit at the grown up table for the first time, you know? And it's like, what would you do if you could help the world? And there's something that idealism I find very intoxicating, you know, and there's, they haven't gotten jaded yet, you know, and, and life hasn't knocked them down a few notches and they haven't seen the worst of humanity and they haven't seen all of this stuff. So I really enjoy that part of it. Thank you so much. The buzz. Thank you. Where is the buzz? You said we're mine. Where is the buzz? <laughs>